Madam President. Senator from Colorado. I'd ask unanimous consent that the quorum call be vitiated. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Madam President, you know, there's an old saying that you don't know what you've got until it's gone. And it's uh, true in particular when you're talking about uh, water. Uh, we have a tendency to take water for granted since we're so used to it always uh, being there when we turn on our faucets or our showers or we want to water our yards. Uh, and we tend to use it inefficiently. Uh, we let the faucet run uh, when we're brushing our teeth or we water our lawns in the middle of the day uh, when evaporation rates are at their highest. But when you grow up in the desert, uh, as I did, you learn to treasure water. Uh, everything in the West is shaped by it, and you know that it uh, might not always be there when you need it. And this will become, uh, particularly in my part of the country, but I think in the presiding officer's state as well, more apparent uh, as we see lower snow, uh, lower snow packs and uh, decreasing precipitation. And we're already uh, in the Southwest uh, because of climate change dynamics and drought cycles are experiencing those situations. Water is the lifeblood of the West. Uh, recent droughts in the southeast of our great country remind us that no one's immune from water shortages. And it's uh, with an eye uh, to those experiences uh, that I rise today to introduce legislation that would take a measured and practical step toward conserving it. Uh, the name of this act is the Water Accountability Tax Efficiency Reinvestment Act of 2009. That's a, that's a mouthful, but if you boil it down to its acronym, it's the Water Act. And the Water Act creates a tax incentive for individuals and businesses to purchase products and services that use water at least a 20% more efficient level in comparable technologies. It's a very similar to the existing tax credit that we all receive now for purchasing energy efficient Energy Star products. Uh, certainly uh, you see Energy Star products uh, all over homes and increasingly customers are purchasing them. Uh, I want to thank uh, my friend and colleague uh, in the House of Representatives where the presiding officer and I have the honor of serving, uh, Congressman Mike Kaufman, for introducing uh, this measure in the House. I'm pleased to work with him in a bipartisan uh, way. He's a member of the Republican Party in a bicameral way because, of course, he serves in the House of Representatives. And uh, I rise today in part to urge my colleagues here in the Senate uh, to join us in supporting uh, this bill. Why? Well, the more we can conserve today, the more we can decrease the demands on our existing water resources. And better yet, uh, we save our constituents and ourselves literally hundreds of dollars in the process. What would the Water Act do? Well, Madam President, it would create a 30% tax credit on the purchase of products that have earned the Environmental Protection Agency's Water Sense label. There would be a maximum cap of $1,500, uh, but that's a handsome incentive uh, for us as consumers. Now, like the uh, Energy Star label that's awarded by the EPA and the Department of Energy the water sense label would be reserved for products that consume at least 20 percent less water than comparable uh, items. Uh, now these products are becoming much more common. They include uh, many brands of faucets, toilets, shower heads, uh, even irrigation services. Uh, the predictions are that soon uh, entire homes will become water sense certified. Now it's not only a bonus for the environment when you conserve water, but it's helpful to our wallets. Uh, the cheapest gallon of water, uh, frankly, just like the cheapest barrel of oil, is the one you don't use. And uh, it's estimated by the EPA that with some simple adjustments in the way we use water, the average household could save uh, close to $200 uh, a year on their water and sewer bills. Now, there's an interesting nexus as well between water and energy use. If you conserve water, you conserve energy. Just think, less water means less energy to heat the water for our showers, our sinks, our dishwashers, and the, the energy that's used to supply and treat public water. Uh, the EP estimates if 1% of American households used water sense certified toilets, each year we could save enough electricity to power 43,000 homes for a month. So take lower water bills, lower energy bills, and reduce demands on the environment that's something uh, we should all be striving uh, to accomplish. Now, numerous groups uh, already support this legislation as it's written. 
Uh, and I focus in particular on my home state of Colorado where industry groups, water authorities, and local leaders in Colorado have signed on to this concept. I wanted to also say that moving forward on this legislation gained uh, added importance for me last month when I attended a briefing that the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research held. And this particular briefing is focused on the ways in which we'll have to adapt our management of water resources in response to the effects of climate change. And I know the, the uh, presiding officer and I share a real concern about uh, climate change. I used to think that any discussion of adapting to climate change was, was misguided because we were giving in to the problem. We were saying we're going to let climate change occur. But I've come to believe that uh, adapting to climate change is a recognition of reality. It's, it's having impacts uh, all across our country. And if we don't act now, uh, we won't be meeting our responsibilities to not only our constituents today, but our children and their children in the future. In, in my state, all you have to do is look for an example, at the Colorado River. Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, California, Nevada, and the, the country of Mexico have an agreement that was reached uh, about 80 years ago on how you divide up the Colorado River. And when that agreement was reached, I believe in 1922, we thought there were 16.5 million acre feet of water that we could divide among all those states and communities. We now believe that that time period when we took those numbers into account was a particularly wet period in the history of the Colorado River Basin. And our best guess now is that there's only about 14.5 million acre feet available. And uh, 16.5 million versus 14.5 million, there's a 2 million acre foot deficit there. Uh, and it's causing increasing uh, concern. Uh, so these, these water shortages uh, that are possible because of climate change combined with uh, drought cycles uh, that are normal uh, have the potential uh, to cause great political tension and controversy. Uh, the river levels in the Colorado Basin most likely are going to get uh, lower. And that means serious impacts for businesses, for homes, uh, for farmers. Uh, in seven states and two countries. So the longer we wait to take practical steps to adjust the effects of climate change, the harder it'll become uh, to deal with them. And the good news is, uh, is that we have options that will do more than help address global climate change. These are policies we ought to be adopting anyway. Uh, they simply have added significance now uh, and they make perfectly common sense. To return uh, then to the Water Act, which I came to the floor to uh, discuss. Uh, this is a prime example of how we can adapt and take some steps today that benefit all of us. If consumers in the Colorado River Basin install water sense products, uh, they'll decrease the, the demand on an over allocated Colorado River Basin, reduce their water and energy bills, and then head, help head off an impending problem as a result of climate change. Uh, this is a win-win-win across uh, the board, and again, I, came, I come to the floor to ask my colleagues to join me in supporting what is a common sense, bipartisan, bicameral effort to save taxpayers money and take a big practical step towards uh, greater water conservation. Madam President, as I close, I would also add that once again we would be leading the world as it develops and it, the demand for water around the world increases. Uh, these products would be available in the marketplaces uh, in China and India, Brazil, uh, and the developing world, which would help our economy uh, and help create jobs as well, which we're really focused here singularly as United States Senators. I know that's important in the presiding officer's home state as well. So with that, uh, Madam President, I'd ask that my statement be printed in the record following the text of this bill, uh, and I yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll.